Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash Entitled People. Sit comfortably because today we have another set of crazy stories for you. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Thanks for the all expenses paid maternity leave. About three months after I graduated from college, I finally managed to land my first real job in my field working in marketing for a medical office. The pay wasn't great, but it was a job in my field and I would have been silly to say no. I worked right under the CEO of the company, we'll call her Mary, and for the first nine months everything was wonderful. Mary was so impressed with my work, all my coworkers loved me and were glad I joined the team, etc. I had a few unfortunate circumstances arrive over the course of a three-month span. The death of my grandma, my friend fell while visiting from abroad and broke his jaw, and I got my wallet stolen in New York City. These were all crazy unfortunate events that I had to miss a few days for, but they were not good enough excuses for Mary. She had a history of going after people one at a time for the pettiest of reasons, and I was to be her next target. Luckily, her husband, who also worked at the company, loved me and was able to keep her off my heels for a while. A month after my last absence, Mary hired Jerry, whose job was unknown to everyone in the company. Most of the 30-person staff was unsure why he was always creeping around our office, and he showed a great interest in me. He would assign me menial tasks to complete and make sure to look in my cubicle at least once an hour to make sure I was working. It got a little annoying because I didn't even know who he was and I wasn't supposed to be working for him. After a few weeks of this strange behavior, it was announced that Jerry was to be the new chief business officer of the company and he would be my new boss. I was a little nervous about this, but mostly I was relieved to not have to report to Mary anymore. Jerry and I developed a great working relationship, much to Mary's dismay, and he thought I was great at my job. It had turned out that Mary had assigned him to monitor my performance, hoping to find me slacking off or any other reason to fire me. He came up empty-handed, and had then convinced her that he should now be in charge of me because the CEO shouldn't have to be tasked with low-level employees' day-to-day -day management and monitoring. He did this because he was fond of me and knew I was good at my job. He was trying to save me from her strange vendetta against me. Well, about three months after Jerry officially became my boss, I found out I was pregnant. I had terrible morning sickness and my work performance started to decline slightly. I was throwing up in the bathroom at least five times daily, but because Mary had instilled the fear of God in me the last time I'd called out, I never missed work. Mary was still tracking my every move and she noticed my minor slip in performance. She used this to her advantage and called a meeting while Jerry and I were working in another office for the entire staff. She spent the entire meeting talking about how marketing was failing and slandering me to the entire office. I was very close with many coworkers, and they texted me right after the meeting and told me all the BS she was spewing about me. Although most of the office was on my side, she convinced a few of my coworkers to start accusing me of not doing my job and I was berated with email after email of demands and accusations. This was too much for newly pregnant, not emotionally stable me, and I broke down crying to Jerry. At this point, I knew I had to tell him I was expecting. He was so happy for me. He told me not to worry about Mary or my mean co-workers, that he'd take care of them. He said, the most important job from now until the end of your life is taking care of your child. Two weeks went by of me vomiting every day, still scared of Mary's potential vengeance, when I gathered all my courage and announced to my coworkers one by one that I was expecting. They were all very excited for me. I told Mary's husband last and asked him if he'd tell her for me. I mentioned that I was nervous about Mary finding out, but he reassured me that she was a mother too and she would understand. I went home for the evening with a smile on my face hopeful that Mary's crusade against me would finally be over. Later that night, I got a text from Jerry telling me to come to the main office in the morning instead of the other location because Mary had a new project for us to start on. Naively, I didn't think anything of it and went to work in the morning thinking all was well with the world. I went to my desk, set up my laptop, and was getting frustrated that my email password wasn't working when Jerry poked his head in my cube and told me that Mary was ready to see us. She asked how I was, and I said fine, except for the morning sickness. 
She ignored the comment about my pregnancy and began to tell me how I was no longer the person that she hired. She said that my quality of work had steeply declined over the months and that she never knew if I was going to show up to work or not. I now knew where this was heading. She told me she was letting me go so she could find someone capable of doing my job. I broke down. I was 24 years old, 10 weeks pregnant, and unemployed. I ran to my desk, crying hysterically, and Jerry chased after me. He took me into his office and assured me that he was already doing everything in his power to try and find me a new position within his sphere of influence. He told me over and over that he and Mary's husband had both told her not to fire me, that it was completely unfair and unjustified, and that there could very well be ramifications. But she didn't listen. He escorted me out to my car, and I somehow managed to drive the 10 minutes to my boyfriend's house while in complete hysterics. By noon that day, over half of my coworkers either texted or called me telling me how sorry they were, how unwarranted this was, and how they would do everything in their power to help me find a new job. Some of them even broke down crying in the middle of the meeting Mary held to announce my firing. My boyfriend told me I needed to find a lawyer ASAP, but I was so distraught I didn't get out of bed for what seemed like a week. About a month after I was dismissed from my job, I found a lawyer who was chomping at the bit to take my case. I signed the papers with him and filed a discrimination case against my former employer. Mary was quick to respond to the original notice with four pages of slander about how terrible I was and how she didn't even know I was pregnant. All a load of bull. After about a month of back and forth, she finally understood that she didn't have a leg to stand on and that she needed to get a lawyer. A month after our lawyer's first correspondence, the company agreed to settle with me to avoid court and what would have been a certain loss. I had my daughter in November, got to take a lovely maternity leave on their dime, and am now happily employed working in my field for a different company with amazing growth potential. And our next story. Man calls police on my store for giving the correct change. I work as an assistant manager at a large crafts retailer. One day, I'm on the register helping out with busy lines when I get an older couple at my register. I ring everything up and she pays in cash. After I give the wife, W, the change, she asks if she could get change for $2 and quarters. I say all right and take the $2 and give her eight quarters. I thought everything was perfect until the husband, H, chipped in. H, you need to give my wife the correct change. She gave you $2. Me, I did give her the correct change, sir. No, you didn't. I was standing here the whole time. You need to learn how to count money correctly. I took two $1 bills from her and gave her, don't explain your mistake to me. Talk to my wife and apologize to her. The husband then proceeds to leave the store while I'm standing there with his wife. She gives me a sympathetic look like she knows I was right. I'm sorry about that, she says. I'll just be taking my things and leaving now. Thank you. She leaves the store and meets her husband outside. I'm watching through the doors as her husband approaches her, probably asking if I gave her the right change. All of a sudden, he starts shaking angrily and stomps back into the store. I'm standing there thinking, oh crap, what is this guy's problem? The man stomps right in front of me and gives me a dirty look. I want to talk to the highest manager here right now. I call the store manager and he meets the guy up front. This idiot needs to learn how to count chains correctly. My wife gave him $2 and your idiot gave her eight quarters. Manager, eight quarters is $2, sir, but we can check the cameras above the register to make sure everything was done correctly if you'd like. Don't waste your time. You're both stupid beyond compare. I'm calling the police. The police show up and ask what's going on. We state everything that happened and even offer to show them the cameras. The police say there's no need and ask if they want us to escort the man off the property. The store manager says yes, because he's banning the man from our store. I still have no idea why that guy thought eight quarters wasn't two dollars. And our last story. Neighbors wanted to call a professional to mark their property line. My parents agreed. This was a long time ago, but I remember it clearly. We moved into a community with tight space in between our house and our neighbors, and we didn't like them being able to see into our kitchen. We put up a bunch of plants costing thousands, but my parents thought it would be worth it. A week later, my parents awoke to the plants completely chopped down. My father was furious and marched down to our neighbor's house. He told my father the plants were on his property line 
therefore he had the total right to take them down. He warned that if anything were to go on his property again, he would report us to the authorities immediately. Later that day, my father called the company that put in the plants, and with the warranty, we could have them replanted next week for no charge. We made sure there was no way it was on our neighbor's property. However, a few days later, we caught him chopping them down at 2 a.m. We called the police upon obstruction of property, and after a chat with my neighbor, he decided to call a professional and mark his property line. My father agreed. A few days later, I got home to find orange tape in my neighbor's yard. Apparently, his fence was 11 feet over our property line. We watched as he took down his fence, completely furious. Within the next month, we were enjoying our new space and privacy in our backyard, and my neighbor ended up losing a quarter of his backyard. My neighbor ended up having to pay almost $10,000 for destruction of our property, and we got to plant our plants again. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.